Hello, everyone. And thank you, Jim. And right back at you, your love for John has made you a lion for justice. Thank you all for joining us at GLAD Spirit of Justice Celebration tonight. Every year, we come together to honor GLAD's mission, the pursuit of equal and equitable justice under the law. And of course, this year coming together looks a bit different. Yet despite the physical distance between us, I know we all remain committed to these goals. And at GLAD, we're grateful as ever for you, for your continued support, and more importantly, for showing the world that LGBTQ people are not only here to stay, but vital, indispensable, and animating forces in our communities and our country. In a year that refused to slow down, GLAD hasn't either, no matter what. No matter what, GLAD has your back. The current administration has taken drastic steps to roll back hard-won protections for our community. They're trying to strip away health care coverage for LGBTQ people. They're leaving LGBTQ youth in the cold by excluding them from federal programs and allowing shelters to turn away transgender people experiencing homelessness. And right now they're working to confirm a Supreme Court justice who has indicated she is unlikely to share our vision of equity, equality, or one justice for all. It is daunting, but we have been there before. We've taken on big fights and won, and we will win again. For the past 42 years, GLAD has always found a path forward. Together with all of you, we have moved mountains. Just think of all the progress we've made in our lifetimes. When I started at GLAD in 1990, LGBTQ people were considered, in the words of Justice Kennedy, outlaws. That was only a few years after the Supreme Court had upheld the state's criminal law on homosexual sodomy, in which the Supreme Court described our, described our privacy and liberty arguments as, at best, facetious. But we kept at it. We poured ourselves into years of diligent, strategic, legal, and cultural change work. The Supreme Court reversed itself in the Lawrence case in 2003, rightly recognizing LGBTQ people's equal constitutional freedoms and liberties. In the same year, GLAD won the first ever marriage case from the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court in an historic opinion by Chief Justice Margaret Marshall. We were outlaws no more. Now we are in the law. Those victories opened minds. Working with state partners and like-minded allies, we won a judicial victory in Connecticut, then a series of successful legislative and ballot measures in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Rhode Island. And we kept the pressure on. GLAD filed and won the first challenges to the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, and the Supreme Court agreed when they struck down DOMA in 2013. No skim milk marriages, as the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg put it. The 2015 Obergefell ruling was a joyous bookend to GLAD's and our community's long advocacy on marriage and made marriage equality the law of the land. We are forever grateful to the plaintiffs for sharing their personal stories, their sacrifices, to the attorneys, amici organizations, elected officials, and the millions of people in every state who supported the marriage equality movement. And that is so many of you here tonight. Thank you. It's been a long five years since Obergefell. We have faced challenges since then, with attempts to make our marriage a second class, and the current administration has tested and is testing all of us. Even so, we've all won crucial victories on the national level. In June, the Supreme Court ruled that firing a person because they are LGB or trans is discrimination under existing federal civil rights laws. That 6-3 opinion was authored by Justice Gorsuch and joined by Chief Justice Roberts, two conservative justices who were appointed by Republican presidents. That triumph is a testament to the work we do. Glad devoted years to building out sex discrimination through state and federal litigation and policy and helped show the path forward by winning one of the earliest federal, federal court sex discrimination victories. The fact is, we can win at the Supreme Court because the Constitution is on our side and because we are right. 
As Justice Ginsburg wrote in the 1996 Virginia Military Institute case, the history of our Constitution is the story of the extension of constitutional rights and protections to those once ignored or excluded. We are not going backwards. The Supreme Court rulings we've won are based on foundational and mainstream legal principles. Respect for families is woven into our communities, businesses, and institutions throughout our society. And the vast majority of Americans support LGBTQ people's equal justice under the law. Today, we the people absolutely includes LGBTQ people. We cannot be pushed out of the Constitution. But we are not done. For one thing, we have to make sure that we the people really means all of us. Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and all people of color who are part of the LGBTQ community confront more than one form of systemic discrimination. So to achieve true equality and equity for all of us, we need to engage and change those systems. For the generations coming of age today, confronting these systemic hurdles can be overwhelming. And many young people who are LGBTQ, people of color, or living with disabilities, or any combination of the three, have been left behind in our child welfare and juvenile justice systems. At schools, these young people face disproportionate discipline, suspensions, expulsions, police referrals. At home and in communities, they too often face bigotry, disapproval, or family rejection. In the child welfare and juvenile justice systems, young people can linger for far too long and be denied access to culturally competent programming and gender-affirming care. All of these failures obstruct our children's journeys to adulthood. GLAD is fighting to change all of that, to replace reflexive rejection with love and support. And to make it happen, GLAD is relying once again on our not-so-secret strategy. If what we need doesn't exist, create it. In Massachusetts, we helped establish an LGBTQ child welfare coalition and a working coalition addressing COVID outbreaks in the child welfare and juvenile justice systems. In Maine, we helped kickstart a voluntary community reintegration team process to move justice-involved youth into supportive community placements. Our on-the-ground approach and close working relationships have already had an impact. Following the tragic suicide of a transgender young person in Maine a few years ago, we began working with young people, advocates, and experts to make systemic changes to the state's youth justice system. We helped draft a bill that allows young people to seek judicial review on the conditions of their confinement with court-appointed attorneys, and which forbids incarceration for certain classes of offenses and ends the state's one-year mandatory minimum sentences. It's no panacea, but it's a step in the right direction. And the bill has now earned the support of all government stakeholders in Maine. That's exactly the kind of coalition work that is key to victories. Now, in just a few weeks, the day after the election, in fact, the Supreme Court will hear another historic case for LGBTQ rights. And this time, they'll do so without the wisdom of Justice Ginsburg. The Supreme Court will decide whether or not Catholic Social Services, which contracted with the City of Philadelphia to recruit and screen foster parents, was violating the law by not recruiting or training same-sex couples because of the organization's religious beliefs. As a matter of constitutional principle, we all come before our government as equals. Therefore, this, as any taxpayer-funded agency, should consider all qualified persons, including those who are same-sex couples. Catholic Social Services says other agencies can serve same-sex couples. But let's not kid ourselves. Such a rule would allow people to be turned away from government programs for who they are. Would they have anywhere else to go? Could such a rule really be cabined only to foster care programs, as if that's not bad enough? Past rulings tell us the Supreme Court should reject religious beliefs and morality as reasons for treating LGBTQ people differently from everyone else. It's the court's responsibility to say so. And no matter what the ruling, 
GLAD will contest any attempt to create any second class status for LGBTQ people and families. So even with monumental victories over two plus decades now, we know the fight for equality is far from over. Epic struggles proceed in fits and starts, and that goes for fights for racial justice, economic justice, gender justice, as well as LGBTQ equality and more. Our community and all marginalized communities have persevered through these epic struggles. We have learned from them. They've shaped us and made us more resilient and united. So even as we face unprecedented challenges, remember, we have moved mountains. We are part of We the People. And GLAD, with your support, will fight on and fight smart in every way required in these times. Thank you.